companies involved in commercializing the world's first injectable bone regenerating grass substitute. And it's made from a product from, from animal tissue in fact. So today I want to show you how xenogenic transplantation from animals to humans can disrupt the way practitioners will treat diseases in the future. I'm sure everybody has heard of transgenic animals. The most famous one is probably the transgenic pig and the transgenic cow. Scientists are trying to develop animals that can supply organs and tissues. They can be transplanted from animal to human without rejection phenomena. So there's a lot of DNA technology going into that. And today I will show you how our company has been able to humanize animal bone matrix and make it transplantable from animal to human. And how we, we, we went up to do that over time, really, really briefly. So, bone grafting procedures, which are the most, second most commonly transplanted tissue in the body of the blood, have problems. But they are associated with increased uh, incidence of death, complication, buttocks anesthesia, pain, morbidity, uh, psychological factors, and it costs about 27,000 rand to do this uh, transplantation. It's costing South Africa about 300 million rand per annum to do uh, autologous bone grafting. And as I said, it's a very painful procedure. You want to avoid it if you can. So what we've done the last 10 years is we've developed a oxygenic bone matrix as a cost-effective graft substitute for the regeneration of the skeleton. And the lead product is OBM, which is produced from porcine bone and incorporates a consortium of growth factors which interact synergistically to induce and to signal stem cells in the body to create new bone in the bone defect. And here we see images on the bottom of the capable hands of uh, Dr. Murdoch and Professor Ramakopa at Vich University making the first injection into a patient who has an open bone fracture and has a large bone void who, who typically would have been grafted with an autogenous graft but has been now injected with a porcine derived humanized bone graft. And I will show you some x-rays a little bit later. So very briefly, the company was incorporated in 2002 and has gone through all the stages of, of the long pipeline of development from preclinical to clinical studies. We've been funded by the Innovation Fund of the Technology of the Department of Science and Technology. And recently, we've also obtained a grant from the Technology Innovation Agency. This is the first laboratory that we set up showing the chromatography room where we purify growth factors because of evolutionary conservation. We discovered, well, I should say scientists before us have discovered that the sequence identity of the porcine and human BMP is 99.9% identical. This is remarkable, right? Which means you can transplant the BMP. But it wasn't always easy to transplant the collagen matrix uh, uh, that, that had uh, suffered from the rejection phenomena. So we had to spend a lot of years to also learn how to humanize the, the delivery system and then combine the whole lot together in a composite which could be transplanted. Eventually we got patents granted in a number of countries worldwide with the help of the Patent Support Fund, also of the DST. And briefly, these patents are defending and protecting the intellectual property of what we call a disassembly, reassembly process of bone matrix. The bone matrix is disassembled, and then there are two arms of uh, isolation, purification, where we purify the, the growth factors on the one side, and we purify the, the collagen matrix and humanize it. But then we are able to recombine these components with a very high level of BMP, the, the signaling factor for the stem cells, higher than any other material previously uh, used in, in medicine, and that results in the OBM product. So, humanization of animal DBM basically entails the starting material animal demineralized bone matrix, which is derived from an animal, and then through the process of uh, tissue engineering, it becomes an engineered DBM, OBM as, as we call it. 
So these um, products are able to regenerate bone of the epidicular axial skeleton. We've used it extensively in trauma fractures. Uh, we use it now also to be able to, to um, fuse the spine. Um, and more recently, we, we tried the world's first femoral head regeneration, femoral head that, that has osteonecrosis. It is, it is a condition where the femoral head dies slowly. And we were able to, through minimal invasive technique, go into the femoral head and curatage the dead tissue and inject this material. And this patient was able to walk again. So the applications are very wide in the skeleton, uh, from um, non-healing fractures, malunions, non-unions, degenerative spinal conditions, even periodontal bone loss, where patients lose bone around the teeth and have to regenerate the bone. And obviously, the minimally invasive procedures by virtue of the fact that this bar material is injectable. Human clinical studies, as you can see a long track record and how long it takes to get these things to market. Uh, from 2001, we've been busy with clinical studies. And the next one we're planning starting in 2018 is to fuse bones of the spine. Our clinical studies have shown a high level of safety and efficacy comparable to the autogenous bone grafting at three months and six months. And this work is uh, to be published by Dr. Murdoch. And this histological picture is very, very important to show microscopically the, uh, the way this bone graft works. It's got a very high level of bar compatibility. And we can see the darker and greener um, lighted segments. If I can get a, a laser to work, unfortunately. Um, and basically, the picture shows to somebody that knows the art that the human bone is able to directly graft onto the animal implant. So this is very important. Here's an example of a gunshot defect on the metacarpal of this patient, also treated at the Johannesburg Hospital. Uh, who, who, and you can see uh, the regeneration on the right hand side, full regeneration. Um, this is probably our biggest defect that we were able to regenerate in a patient who was scheduled for amputation following multiple previous failed attempts to regenerate the bone. It was also grafted with an autogenous bone graft, externally fixated, and uh, this patient was uh, now at, at, at uh, the end of his treatment and there was no other solution. And the implantation of the, of the OBM resulted in full restoration, regeneration of the bone elements, the, the bone marrow and, and the cortical bone. The, the technology is not as expensive as you might think. One injection of this OBM product costs about 13,000 Rand. Um, doing a second uh, autogenous graft procedure costs 27,000 Rand. So we're able to cut the costs of treating the patient, saving, sparing the pain, uh, the long-term uh, effects and the morbidity. Medical Aid has approved this product at Discovery. We obtained the, the approval just a few months ago. Uh, the MCC has also um, approved the, the, the company to, as, as, a, as a medical device company. And to date, uh, this technology has treated over 90,000 patients via license deal with a company uh, in South Africa since 2002. And more recently, we've, uh, with the new Porcelain product, we've treated over 1,000 patients. And it's uh, Tim Altus, and not all of it, but just some of the guys that work with us. Thank you very much for listening to my talk. Wow, I think that's uh, pretty mind-blowing stuff you guys are working on. Hey? So uh, congratulations. I mean, uh, I don't know about you guys, but I'm, I'm quite blown away by what, what I've just seen. What has been the interest internationally uh, for your product? Is, is that something that you can take to the US, for example? And I would imagine the barriers of entry must be, uh, I don't even want to get started there. How difficult is it? It is very difficult. Um, we have 40 um, confirmed uh, licenses licensees, but then needing a CE mark or an FDA mark. So uh, that is now the stumbling block. And it, money. The, okay, so that's all money. And do you have to redo all those trials in the US? No, not necessarily. Um, this is important that companies developing products need to follow a GCP, good clinical practice, to register the trials in Europe, to register in the United States, so that you know at, at some point your data will be accepted by these regulatory agencies. Now, I'm very interested in the last one you mentioned, um, you, the actual physical bone graft. So you take a piece of bone and you substitute it in the human body for what might be missing, right? When you say poor kind, is it 
from the pigs. pigs. From yes. pigs. Uh, how is that a, a? It must be a barrier if you look at, for example, religious denominations yes. like Jewish people and Muslim people. Yes. Uh, Muslims, is, is it an issue? It is. So we took it to Islamic Council. It was rejected, but we are following up with a bovine derived product because now we have bovines which are mad cow disease free. That is the original plan, but yeah. as you know, medical disease stopped a lot of projects. Yes. So we're back with the, uh, the bovine project now. But still, porcine, you say, is like almost 99% compatible to human bones, and bovine, is it more it's of a high, yes. Really? What, what about other animals like uh, sheep, for example? Yes, it, it, this is really incredible to, to, to see a fruit fly, BMPG, which is called decapentaplegic, it's a crazy Greek word, can make bone in a human. This is how much this protein has been conserved throughout nature. So if you can isolate the protein or make it through recombinant DNA technology, you can use it. Wow. Therapeutically. And, and in terms of what's happening around the world with this kind of bone regeneration, how unique is your product? Is, are other people doing similar stuff? We rate ourselves in the top three in the world. They are recombinant. This is synthetically manufactured BMP. We're the world's only uh, uh, BMP consortium. The stage that, that, that relies on <coughs> multiple growth factors for synergy bone induction. And you can, you can uh, what do you call this, uh, trademark this? Or can you take it? Oh, it's been taken. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic stuff. Thank, Thank you so, so much for your time. Thank you. Yeah.